Hi, I'm Alexis. I'm the horticulture agent here for Boyle County Cooperative Extension, and today we're going to talk about how to start transplants. We are using a soilless uh, media, so this one is specifically pro mix, uh, but you can use anything you like. Jiffy, a lot of people will make their own uh, with a, a peat perlite mixture, uh, and they'll, you know, can add in some compost or anything like that. And so there's really no wrong way to do it. You just don't want to use straight out of the garden uh, soil for this, so that's going to be important. I prefer to use a mix that doesn't have fertilizer in it. Uh, the reason why is because a lot of your seedlings are really sensitive to fertilizers uh, and it's just as easy to kind of add that in and then if you want to do organic you definitely don't want to have any fertilizer in that. Uh, but most important thing when you're dealing with uh, seeding is that you have a really good moist uh, soil. So you want your soil to be about the consistency of a wrung out sponge. And so what I think about there is we want the soil to uh, feel wet to the touch, but we don't want to be able to wring out any moisture out of that. And so uh, this one was a little bit wet before we started. Sometimes you'll get it and it is just as dry as can be, uh, and it takes some time for that to soak in. The soil can get pretty hydrophobic uh, and it just will shed that water. So it's really important that you do a good mix in here. You can break up any clumps. Um, sometimes you'll find little pieces of leaves in there. That's okay. It happens and we will just mix this up. You're gonna get dirty, accept that fact. It's a good thing to do with kids. Just get them to mix the soil. So there's many different things that you can use when you're seeding. One are going to be plastic trays. There's multiple sizes of plastic trays. I have a few examples here. One example is the 216. So the cells are going to be smaller on these. And by cells, I mean these little openings. So there's 216 uh, chances to plant in this one. There's the next, one of the next sizes up is gonna be the 98. So there's 98 cells. So you can see that the trays are the exact same size. However, the cells are gonna be larger. And then you move up into something like a 72 which is 72 cells, and the holes are gonna be even larger than that. You can go up to 50s, uh, 32s, there's smaller sizes as well. So it's gonna depend on what you're growing. Are you growing something that's slow? Are you growing something that's very quick and is gonna fill that cell with roots fast? Uh, so you wanna keep in mind that Something in a small cell will become root bound faster than something in a large cell. But we don't want to overwhelm those plants with too much soil that's staying moist uh, because they're not, the seedlings don't have a root system uh, to take up that moisture yet. We also have um, these, um, sh what I call shuttle trays. Uh, and so there's these uh, open bottomed ones. Uh, and so what these are great for is that sometimes these trays can get kind of flimsy when they're full of wet media. So you can put the tray into uh, this shuttle and it's just much easier to shuffle those around uh, and move them. Um, solid bottom trays. So these are gonna hold water. So these are going to be imperative if you're dealing with really small seeds, uh, maybe ones that you can't bury and they're on the surface of the soil. And so you bottom water. And so the water, you put it in this bottom tray, then you put your tray in there and it will suck up that water from beneath. So that keeps your seeds from washing away. But you gotta keep in mind that you don't necessarily want to keep your trays in here uh, because you'll get root rots uh, from too much moisture. So eventually, once you have seedlings growing, you're going to want to move them out of this solid bottom into uh, something with holes or just by sitting by itself. So you may have noticed that some of these trays look like they've been used before, and that's because they have, and we like to reuse things whenever possible, uh, especially plastic products. Uh, and the, you can do that. The most important thing is that you treat these uh, with a bleach solution. So a 10% bleach solution. Make sure you're getting all those cracks and crevices and that will kill any uh, bacteria or fungi that might have gotten in there during the season. Uh, and then you just stack those up and you can use them year after year. And eventually they do break down uh, and that happens, but anything to save, save a dollar.
Now it's time to fill our tray. And believe it or not, uh, there is a right and a wrong way to do that. So we're going to show you the right way first. And then I want to show you what not to do. Because uh, I see a lot of people doing this and uh, it will not make your plants happy. So we're going to start and you just pick up a big old load of soil. And we just start putting it down in these holes. Best to work in an area that you uh, can get a little bit messy in for obvious reasons. So what you want to do is kind of fill these holes as much as you can and you can leave the excess on here to start. So what you want to do now is you're actually going to tap your uh, cells a couple times, two or three times. That's all you need to do. And what you can see uh, is that this soil has settled down into these cells. There's a lot less excess and there's even some areas that we can fill in. So I like to just spread out what was an excess on here and then you're just going to fill in where that soil has settled. So what this does is make sure that when you water, your seeds aren't going to settle down in there and be too far under the soil. Uh, and make sure that you're giving there them enough soil. There's not any air pockets that the roots can dry out down in there. So you're just letting it settle. For good measure, uh, I like to give it just one more additional tap, uh, just in case, and that's all you need to do. Okay, so we've shown you how to properly fill a tray to make your uh, seedlings really, really happy. And so we want to show you two things that we see on regular uh, that people do that you don't, you don't want to do this, these things. So one thing is uh, what we kind of showed you earlier was people will fill the tray uh, and they leave it and they start seeding. And what they don't do is the tapping method that we showed you. And like you can see, uh, the soil has really settled. Um, you know, seeds could have washed away if we had watered and left, left it like it was. Uh, and so you should go back and fill this in. The other thing I see people do is they're actually pressing the soil down into the tray. So we don't want to do this. Uh, and the biggest reason is that you're compacting the soil uh, down in here. So so we don't want to make the seedlings early life harder than it has to be. So we don't want to compact this uh, and, and make it more difficult because you're basically making these little bricks uh, that are down in here. Remember, these seedlings, they're babies, right? And they don't have a whole lot of energy to be able to push out that root system uh, and also throw up uh, some leaves, their cotyledons, to start photosynthesizing. The beauty of nature is that we have a lot of uh, different seed types. And so what I've got here to show you guys today is some beans. Uh, this is a salad mix, so it's kind of a masculine mix. There's a few different items in here. Uh, and then we've got some tomatoes, which I'm sure everybody's seen all of these before, but I wanted to show you kind of the size difference on some of these. A good rule of thumb when you're seeding is that you want to go twice as deep as uh, the seed is tall. So for lettuce, uh, right, that's going to be really, really shallow. Uh, it's almost just like a dusting of soil on top of them. For beans, right, you can go much, much deeper uh, depending on the size of the bean. And for tomatoes, uh, often in between. And tomatoes can sometimes be a special case uh, because when you pot these up or plant them in the ground, you can actually bury that stem uh, a little bit. But a uh, good rule of thumb is twice as deep as the seed is tall. So we're talking about uh, sowing seeds for transplants uh, in the garden later in the season, but there's also lots of seeds that you can direct seed, uh, and it really depends on the seed size uh, as well as your soil tilth. Uh, so beans are great at direct seeding, uh, but you can do transplants if you want to, and it really comes down to uh, what you're seeding, the time of year. Uh, so there's a lot of great resources that you can use uh, to figure that out. So contact your local county extension office uh, or ID 128 uh, online with the University of Kentucky is a really great resource for all things garden related uh, and can help walk you through do I direct seed these carrots or do I transplant them and basic questions such as that. So we're going to plant uh, a few of each of these just so you can kind of see the difference on uh, depth that we're talking about here. Uh, one helpful tool, uh, so there's lots of different seeding tools. Uh, you can get a dibbler uh, and I like to use my fingers, but there are things called dibbler boards that have little knobs on them that fit the exact tray that you're using. 
Uh, so you can make those or you can buy those or you can use your finger, depends on the quantity of items that you're doing. Um, I usually just use my finger or the end of a uh, pencil. A pencil eraser works really well uh, for the size that you're doing. There's no right or wrong way. You can pre-dibble. You can um, dibble as you go to help you keep track of what you're planting and where you're planting those. Uh, so it's 100% up to you. Another helpful tool is either the end of a pencil or the end of a toothpick. Uh, and you're going to either have a little cup of water uh, that you're going to dip it into and that water will help the seed to stick or um, if you're flying by the seat of your pants <laughs> and don't mind getting a little dirt in your mouth, you can just wet the tip of your pencil or your toothpick to your tongue and in theory it will pick some of these little guys up and then you can just drop them in. So when you're working with expensive seed or small seed where you don't want more than one seed per cell, uh, this, these very simple tools can be very effective. And thanks for watching. Uh, if you liked our video, please hit like down there at the bottom and feel free to comment with any ideas you have for future videos. If you have any other questions, just visit your local county extension office and they will be happy to help you.